if you ever want to feel really old, take somebody whose diaper you once changed and then watch them change their kid's diaper. My wife had the opportunity to do exactly that last week when she flew down to Georgia to meet her niece's brand new baby girl. Now, she doesn't get to see her family very often, so our six-year-old nephew spent most of the week clinging to her leg in one manner or another. So one night, she's hanging out with him, and he's looking for excuses not to go to bed. He's got a bunch of planets on his wall, so he starts asking her, which planet is that? Which one is that? And before long, she's got her laptop fired up, and she's showing him Cassini pictures and Voyager images and close-ups of coronal mass ejections, and he's eating it up. She shows him the Hubble deep field image and his eyes just linger in unchecked amazement when she tells him that every point of light he sees is another galaxy with billions or even trillions of stars. It takes him a second to even think how to respond and when he does, the question is fucking heartbreaking. How many miles is it to heaven? If I'd been there, I might have accidentally ruined the next six Thanksgivings by saying something like, Heaven is from religion, these pictures are from reality. But Lucinda's a bit more diplomatic than me, so she answered as well as it probably could have been answered. She said, We've seen billions of light years away from Earth, but we've still never seen heaven. That's a pretty good answer, I guess, if your goal is not alienating your family, but it's still a sad damn shame that she's got to settle for that. It's a damn shame that at the age of six, this kid's natural curiosity is already being stifled by a ridiculously antiquated view of the universe. Even at six, he's encountering things that can't be made to fit into his biblical worldview. He has to work harder to get to the right answer because he's got to weave his way through this maze of bullshit to get there. You know, the world is already pretty damn hard to wrap your head around at the age of six. It's a lot harder when you've got to reconcile the Adam and Eve myth with the existence of dinosaurs and recessive genes. When you've got to develop a grand unified theory of history that's two parts history and one part Jewish revenge porn. When you've got to stop in the middle of an astronomy lesson to ask where heaven fits into all of this. If you think back to your own childhood, you can probably come up with a memory where you were trying to pound the square peg of mythology into the round hole of science. Christians love to defend their little fairy tales by telling us that they're allegories, but when they pull that shit, ask them if they make that clear to their children. If they don't start out the Bible story for their kids with, here's a fairy tale about Jesus, then it's only an allegory once you get too smart to believe it's true, and that doesn't fucking count. The saddest thing is that this kid's mother isn't even particularly religious. She doesn't go to church, I've never seen her pray, she's certainly read less of the Bible in her lifetime than I read this week, but she's still just religious enough to hamstring her son's education. It's not deliberate, of course, she just believes that religion is good for her kids, because people with every reason to lie say so. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of more reprehensible forms of child abuse that take place in the name of religion. Even if you set aside the sexual and physical abuse that religion is used to justify, you'd still have that wide spectrum of psychological abuses from tormenting kids with images of hell to confusing the shit out of them with a prehistoric notion of sexual morality. But there's just something about taking a huge steaming shit on a child's curiosity that really pisses me off.